Hello and welcome to this course on MATLAB programming for numerical computations. If you have followed the videos in the past few days, you would have seen that while writing the codes, we do tend to make a few errors and the way to catch these errors is through what is known as the debugging. Okay? You have already seen some of the ways in which we have caught the errors. For example, sometimes the errors might be flagged on the MATLAB editor itself. Let us take an example over here. Let us let's say, I were to have this as power carrot carrot 2. Okay? Immediately you will see that this has been underlined and this shows something like this. Okay? That means that errors have been found. Let us look at this parse error at line number 5. Okay? What that means is this particular guy is not recognized. So, why is now we change this to this. Oops, again this was not intentional. I made a mistake over here and again you will see that the error still stays. I change to dot caret and the error goes away. And once the error goes away, I get a green check mark over here. Okay? What does this mean? This means that there are no errors and warnings. Now, let us say I had written it like this. Okay? Now, I get an orange check mark over here with underlining over here. Okay? Now, what does this say? It says add a semicolon after the statement to hide the output. Okay, why is it important to hide the output? Because a function will be called multiple times while solving an integration problem or while solving an ODE problem. The amount of computation overhead required for printing anything is significantly larger than the addition, subtraction, multiplication, division and other mathematical operations that are done routinely. As a result, it will slow down our code significantly and it will print a lot of gibberish on our command prompt. We do not want that to happen and therefore, we want to suppress this. Okay? We can click on fix and this will get fixed. Okay? If you agree with fixing this error, you can always fix this. Okay? Let me go to what we did in the previous video and if you remember, these were the errors that we got. Okay? So, what was the first error? The unrecognized function or variable polyufun. Okay? Immediately at looking at this error, I knew that there was an error in the name polyufun. Okay? It should have been polyfun and it was this was an easy error to catch. Again, if you remember, if you have seen this video, you would have noticed that this was not an error I made intentionally. Even after 22 years of experience, errors like this happen. I just have gotten better at catching these errors. I have just gotten better at debugging. Okay? So, this is an error. As soon as I notice this error, you see where all this errors has, uh, error has been flagged. Okay? Error has been flagged in at t polyufun, error has been flagged in integral calc which is internal function, integral calc start v adapt which is an integral uh, internal function. So, all of these are internal functions where the error has been flagged. Okay? This is basically what is called a trace of the error. Okay? So, the script called a function, that function called another function, that function called another function. So, what MATLAB is telling me that the error could be in this function or it could be in this calling function or it could be in this calling function or it could be in this script. Now, because these are all internal MATLAB functions, none of these I know have error. The error is in my script. So, I will go back and relook at my script and I will realize the problem is the name polyufun. Okay? As soon as I realize the name polyufun has a problem, I convert it into polyfun and I was able to rectify this error. Okay? This what I showed you is errors that were flagged in the MATLAB editor, errors that came out on running the MATLAB file. Okay? So, these are the two common errors. The third error was what is runtime error. Now, why did that error happened? That error happened because uh, the, the com command integral uses what is known as vectorization. That means it assumes your function phi is a function of vectors. Okay? The reason is 
Now why this error happened? The error happened because integral assumes that phi is a function of vectors. So it is alpha plus beta dot star t Okay, but because beta and gamma are scalars, we can safely ignore this dot. Okay, so this is the change that I need needed to make. We will come to this again in week number six, where you might understand this better. But as far as we are concerned, this is an example of a runtime error. Now again, you look at the trace. Okay, error in using caret, error in Nepali fun, error in uh, t uh, uh, in the calling function and error in additional calling functions okay because all of these are functions that are integral are inherent to matlab none of these have errors so the error would either be in the polyphon itself or error would be in line 5 of polyphon okay i know that the error is in line 5 of polyphon through this particular tracing mechanism okay and this particular guy tells me that the error was in using uh, the power function. What was the error? Incorrect dimension for raising power. Check if the matrix is square and power is scalar. To operate on each element of matrix individually, use element by element operation. You remember, we went over this in the previous week. Okay, caret is a matrix operation. But because temperature is a temperature vector, that that our uh, our uh, MATLAB solver integral generates as a result it is not able to get that power okay so I wanted to do an element by element powering and therefore I converted into dot code okay sorry dot caret okay so this is the way we can do the debugging so let us recap the various things that are that are flagged as errors. The errors will be flagged in MATLAB editor as I had shown earlier. Errors will be flagged on running the MATLAB or errors will be of runtime in nature. And you can use the error uh, 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 codes that come on when we write the code or we can use the error trace that gets generated when running the code in order to debug these errors. Okay. So with that, I come to the end of this lecture. This is not just the end of this lecture, but this is also end of week 2 material. To recap what we did on week 1 and week 2, in week 1, we introduced you to MATLAB. We showed a, a numerical example, how a MATLAB uh, program is structured. We talked about arrays, matrices, matrix operation, various numerical operations. We talked about cell arrays and structures. We then finished off showing how to display data in MATLAB command win window as well as how to plot the data. All of this was covered in week 1. What did we do in week 2? Week 2, we primarily focused on scripts and functions. We started off talking about for loop and if then else. Then we spent uh, the second lecture on talking about scripts and functions. Then we talked about how to better write functions using structures to pass on the parameters and how to use various techniques in order to improve our writing of the functions. Finally, in this video, we covered how to debug a code. With that, I come to the end of week 2. I thank you for listening and I will see you in week 3. Thanks and bye.